Hello and welcome to our second novel, which is Sons and Lovers by D. H. Lawrence. I'm going to give you a short introduction about the novel, a background about it, and the main characters. Then from the next lecture, we will start discussing each chapter by its own, highlighting the importance along with the main quotations and discussions. David Herbert Lawrence was born the fourth child of a minor on 11th of September 1885 at Eastwood, some eight miles northwest of Nottingham. Coal had been mined in the district for centuries, but until about 40 years before Lawrence's birth, the process was still particularly medieval. The miner lived in thatched cottages and worked their small mines in the hillsides. About 1850, the scene was transformed by the arrival of the capitalists and the railways. Large collieries were built among the fields. The old cottages gave way to decent but dull rows of brick dwelling built by the colliery companies. Although the population of Eastwood could be classified as almost entirely industrial working class, it was a world far removed from the overpopulated areas of London, Sheffield or Liverpool. According to Lawrence, the miners themselves did not care very much about their wages. They lived an, an almost purely instinctive life, developing a great sense of intimacy and comradeship with one another as they worked half naked down the bit and continued this intimacy as they drank together in the pub after work. They were not at home in the daylight world of hard facts of money and home responsibilities, but the Collery's wives had to live in this daylight world. They had to worry about the material things and do their best to make decent homes for themselves and their children. And the closer the wives go their desired middle class standard of living, the more their colorist husband appeared to them as blundering intruders from an alien, more primitive world. It was this conflict between Lauren's own parents that had a decisive effect on his life. For her, the kind of the problems in the abba or the wives were very concerned and motivated by the work in the mines. And then, after they returned from the work in the mines, they were gathered in the fields and they were eating and they were eating without. أي اهتمام فعلي بعوائلهم وزوجاتهم وهذا اللي نقل العبء تماما من الرجل إلى المرأة خلى الأم هي مسؤولة عن كل شيء عن حياة أبنائها عن تربيتهم عن الأعمال المنزلية عن خارج المنزل كل شيء مناط بهذه الامرأة اللي حست أنه زوجها كأنه إنسان غريب عن البيت لا تربطهم علاقات حميمة أو ودودة ولا تربطهم حس المسؤولية تجاه أبنائهم و Lawrence's novels are not only his spiritual autobiography, they also record in detail the actual physical surroundings and events of his life and almost all of his friends somehow appear in his fiction. According to them, uh, this should be stressed here. Lawrence was not just a wonderful man or a difficult man or at times perhaps almost a mad man not just a preacher or a prophet or an advocate for of social and sexual reform but above all a great writer in sons and lovers lawrence begins to extend the boundaries of the novel and for the first time in english fiction writes about the working class family life untouched by sentimentality or condescension. For the first time, an English writer gives an account of the complete life, mental, spiritual, sexual, of a married couple 
or of young men and women growing up. There are several characters in the novel, which I have mentioned all of them in the handouts. However, I'm going to focus on four of them here in this presentation. So, Gertrude Morel, the first protagonist of the novel, she becomes unhappy with her husband Walter and devotes herself to her children. Then we have Paul Morel. Paul Morel takes over from his mother as the protagonist in the second half of the book. After his brother William's death, Paul becomes his mother's favorite and struggles throughout the novel to balance his love for her with his relationships with other women. We also have Walter Morel, who is Gertrude's husband, a coal miner. Then we have William Morel, their first son, who is Mrs. Morel's favorite until he falls ill and dies. The first part of the novel focuses on Mrs. Morel and her unhappy marriage to a drinking miner. She has many arguments with her husband, some of which have painful results. On separate occasions, she is locked out of the house and hit in the head with a drawer. Estranged from her husband, Mrs. Morel takes comfort in her four children, especially her sons. Her oldest son, William, is her favorite and she is very upset when he takes a job in London and moves away from the family. When William sickens and dies a few years later, she is crushed, not even noticing the rest of her children until she almost loses Paul, her second son as well. From that point on, Paul becomes the focus of her life and the two seem to live for each other. Paul falls in love with Miriam Levers, who lives on a farm not too far from the Moral family. They carry on a very intimate but purely platonic relationship for many years. Mrs. Morrill does not approve of Miriam and this may be the main reason that Paul does not marry her. He constantly wavers in his feelings towards her. وهذه كانت أول جزئية تتدخل فيها الأم في علاقات بول مع النساء أخرى والتي وضعت الكثير من المعوقات في مشاعر بول وعلاقاته خارج الأسرة. Paul meets Clara Dawes, a suffragette who is separated from her husband through Miriam. Suffragette means ناشطة في حقوق الإنسان. As he becomes closer with Clara and they begin to discuss his relationship with Miriam, she tells him that he should consider consummating their love and he returns to Miriam to see how she feels. Paul and Miriam sleep together and are briefly happy, but shortly afterward, Paul decides that he does not want to marry Miriam, and so he breaks up with her. She still feels that his soul belongs to her, and in part agrees reluctantly. He realizes that he loves his mother most, however. After breaking off his relationship with Miriam, Paul begins to spend more time with Clara and they begin an extremely passionate affair. However, she does not want to divorce her husband, Baxter, and so they can never be married. Paul's mother falls ill and he devotes much of his time to caring for her. When she finally dies, he is broken-hearted and after a final plea from Miriam, goes off alone at the end of the novel. Now we have the critical questions. It's an important part of the lecture, which I would love that to concentrate on. Starting with the first question, what is the importance of an autobiographical novel? You may extract the answer from the first novel because it was an autobiographical too. The second question is, one of the main themes of the novel is the social class. How this idea was discussed in the work? 
when when the when the author highlighted the middle class, the struggles and everything, whether it's with work or in their lives, social life and family life. The third and final question: Do you support that Oedipus complex has existed in this work? Elaborate with examples. Whether you agree or not, I would like you to give your justification. Try to. Uh, uh, Think about these questions from now on and we will try to answer them in the next lecture. Okay, that's the end of our lecture. Have a lovely evening and see you next one.